First, I'd like to share with you a little bit about myself. Here is a tour of my shop. It's about a 1,200-square-foot uh, building, and I have 950 of wood shop and uh, about 250 of living space. Dust collector and air compressor outside. Um, very nice old bandsaw. been with a um, reduction drive so I can cut metal with it. And I have a little metal shop in here, a um, separate room with a milling machine, supposedly dust-free so I can do metal work. Uh, fully equipped flat work woodworking shop with um, all of the necessary machines and uh, plenty of tools. I do love old machinery. You can see most of the machines in my shop are uh, older than I am, actually. Um, and this here coming up is a 24-inch planer with a separate DC motor for the feed. It's a really nice machine that makes smooth cuts. A couple old band saws, and the one machine in the shop I'd rather have a modern one is the wood lathe. Here's a robust Sweet 16 where I do most of my work with sandpaper and things all around it. Um, three grinders, four different grits of CBN wheel, and a coarse stone for shaping. Lots of wood. This is dry wood in this corner of the shop. I have another place for wet wood. And this is the Robust American Beauty where I will be doing the uh, demo on today. Here is what my shop looks like today. We had about six inches of snow a couple days ago, and um, it's winter time, not like Hawaii. This is the um, my roommate, and he says, dogs have masters, cats have staff. And he makes it very clear that it's only because he has allowed me to come into the shop and share with you today that I'm even here. Otherwise, I would be paying attention to him. He spends most of his time these days uh, in front of the fire, as you might expect. I'm known for, in the wood turning world, my lidded vessels with finials. And um, I'm going to show you a few of my pieces. I have more at the end, too, for some examples of finial proportions. This one is about 16 inches tall, and it's a um, Tasmanian gum vein burl. And all of those black lines there are little voids, and you can actually see right through this piece like lace. Here's another piece, another shape I really like. Uh, and this one's about 8 inches tall, Amboina with sapwood. Uh, dyed maple burl, and um, this is a, a unique uh, use of the natural edge that uh, I call it a waterfall. And this one was bleached first and then dyed blue because uh, maple burl doesn't take dye, doesn't take bright colors as well. Oh, and bright colors, speaking of which, here's a Banksia pod piece that is bleached and then dyed. I'm having a lot of fun with the color and the Banksia pods. Here's a um, not wood, but it is turned. Uh, lidded bowl with a 23 karat gold rim made out of a moose antler button. And uh, the way I got started in, in wood turning was I was working as a cabinet maker, furniture maker, etc. And my boyfriend at the time asked me to make him a pair of chairs. This was probably 1983 or 4. So I needed to buy a lathe and I got Dale Nish's book, Creative Wood Turning, to teach myself how to turn. Uh, I never made any more, but I did see the pictures of bowls and boxes and things in the back of the book, and that was what really got me hooked. It was another 10 years before I um, met another wood turner, and I didn't really do much turning. Same old story. I'd, I'd read an article in Fine Woodworking Magazine and regrind all my gouges to the shape that that guy said I was supposed to have. and and um, I had more catches than successes, and I made a lot of dog bowls. And um, then, in, about 10 years later, mid-90s, I met a guy who turned me on to making pens. He gave me a craft supplies catalog, and I saw that they had classes out there in Utah. So I went and took a class with Rex Burningham. I came home with the confidence to uh, start making things to sell, and that was when I became self-employed full-time. One of the things I made was uh, 
a lot, quite a lot of was bottle stoppers. And you can sort of see the beginnings of a finial in the bottle stoppers. I didn't know it at the time, but that was how I learned how to make finials. Bot bottle stoppers were um, uh, a way to learn the cuts, to get familiar with the using the gouge. And also, it was an exercise in design, in putting shapes together and making things that looked good. And since I was making a lot of them, I could try different stuff and see how it looked and refine the shapes. And that, that was uh, where finials came from for me. At the time, I was also making these Kenzen vases for uh, cut flowers. And these were shape practice for me. I was... I wasn't hollowing them, so I was able to make quite a few and practice good form. One of the things that helped me a lot was if I made 10 of them and I lined them all up and took a look at them in profile, I could see more about what the strengths and weaknesses of each one were by comparing several of them, more so than I could ever see by just looking at one piece. Small boxes are another thing I always love to make, and uh, the shape practice on the Kenzen vases got me uh, doing some pretty nice little box shapes. And then one day, the magic happened. I, the finials, uh, the bottle stoppers got smaller and thinner and less practical, and one day they attached themselves to uh, one of my boxes, and I had a finial box. And this was exciting for me. This was something that I thought was brand new. At least it was for me. And it, I was excited to make more. I was excited to pursue this direction. And uh, I'm actually still working on the same, same body of work today in a lot of ways. That's all I have for the demo today. I'd like to share with you my slogan, my motto. When we share all, we all grow. And as woodturners, if we give away all of our secrets, all of our tips and tricks, all of our techniques, if we help each other with critique, if we uh, bring our work to the instant gallery so that we can all share, it helps all of us to get better a lot quicker. I encourage you to keep sharing and keep it all going. Thank you very much.